Hi there, this is Anirvan. Welcome to another episode of Anirvan in Conversation with Industry Expert. Today's topic is artificial intelligence. We believe artificial intelligence is one of the defining factors that are going to rewrite the way business is conducted in this decade. Unfortunately, majority of the businesses are completely unaware of the real power that artificial intelligence can bring. And that is why we chose artificial intelligence for the topic today. And to have this wonderful discussion today, we are being joined by Fabio Rodriguez Sanchez, who is the MD of Growth Enablers at Workers Enterprise AI. Welcome, Fabio. Thank you, Arnivan. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Fabio, you've had a very interesting career so far. I mean, the last when we had spoken, you were with Philips Lighting and now Artificial Intelligence. Tell us yes. a bit more about the story. <laughs> yes, uh, thanks. It's a, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, we're, we're at Worker. So what we did was a marriage, and it's a happy marriage. It's a marriage between a team of seasoned business executives like me. You know, I have been 20 years in, in mergers and acquisitions, investment banking and, and integrations, and a team of very capable engineers with a lot of experience on artificial intelligence, essentially data science, what is called a data science today. So, this marriage, what it comes and what it brings to companies is the ability to be pragmatic about enterprise AI. And if, and if there is one message that I would like to deliver the audience today is that there is this myth around you need to have huge databases and a lot of data points and, and data lakes in order to be able to do enterprise AI. And reality is that there are a lot of valuable tools available that you can start deploying and getting results. And you know, the combination of, of business experts and engineers have come us to provide us these, these pragmatic solutions. And, and, and that is what, what, what I would like uh, to, to explain, the, explain the audience today. You mentioned about enterprise AI. For our listeners and viewers, let's start with some elaboration of what an enterprise AI is. So we have these artificial intelligence tools. They have been deployed and worked and, and essentially what they do is learn. We will help machines to learn and to de de develop cognitive abilities. So what we are doing with enterprise AI is taking those tools that already exist and apply them to corporate processes, either to improve your customer service, to improve the customer experience, or to improve the efficiency of some of the processes that you have in the corporate world. And again, the whole approach is, is pragmatism, is deliver results, is taking those tools that exist already and apply them to concrete problems that we have in the, in the corporations. So that's the, the concept of enterprise AI. Would you be able to share some examples in the corporate world where precisely the enterprise AI would be used? Sure. So again, there have been a lot of, of different uses and, and one of them, you know, in, your, in, in the smartphones, you can have face recognition for, him, for example. Those are ex examples that tell you that you don't need to have a lot of data. You take your telephone, you open it up, you take some picture of yourself, and then you start deploying artificial intelligence. Now, that's, that's what Apple is doing. But to bring it to what companies uh, can, can, can use it today is around the whole customer experience. So the ability to serve your customers at any point in time, being able to onboard new customers, being able to collect receivables in an automated way, in a friendly way, in a personalized way, according to your personal preferences, and being able to establish a closer relationship with your customers with the use of, of tools, that is, that is the area where, where we have identified the, most, uh, the largest amount of value for, for corporations at this, at this point in time. A lot of organizations find it difficult 
to start with a new age technology. They don't know where to start. They don't know what's the starting point. How should they create their um, organization ready for a change like this? In your opinion, with enterprise AI, what would be a good starting point? The first starting point is start to, to look at what exists available to inform into what are the pros and the cons of the different use cases. So the companies can, or the leaders behind this initiative can communicate to the rest of the organization what can be done today. We need to bring down the hype. There was a lot of hype of AI three, four years ago, and we need to bring it down to today's reality. What, is, what are the tools that exist today and what, what can they do? My recommendation is to start talking to uh, experts. Um, I'm of course happy available to do that, but there are plenty of tools that you can use. There is uh, Coursera um, that gives excellent you know, courses about what AI is by experts of, of, of the topic. You know, it's, it's important we demysti demystify the whole uh, black box idea of artificial intelligence because that has not helped uh, the industry at all. And, and, it's, and it's key to, to learn to understand what, what is possible and what is not possible so that the whole organization can, can start to understand um, how, to, how to start uh, deploying artificial intelligence. And let me, let me add something to that. We are, we are allergic to the whole transformation concept, right? Digital transformation is, is, is big words. And when it comes to AI, we believe that it's like when it comes to mergers and acquisitions. It's, it's a capability that you need to build from scratch. And it's a muscle that you need to train. You need to start with a concrete, measurable project that takes weeks, something that is a, almost, almost like a pilot but can deliver results so that the organization can really understand what is this about and see the value, tangible value of it. And once this a concrete example is out there, then the companies, the organization can go for the next stage for more complicated topics. But, but it's important to start small and then and build build from there. It's, it's exactly the same like like you and I have talked many times in integrations and, and MA. Start doing something small, build the competence, build the muscle, build the, the knowledge in the organization, and then start going with with bigger uh, ambitions. Is there a specific example that you can share from the corporate world that you really liked? Uh, there is an example that I that I that I love and is is around accounts receivable in an insurance company. So we're talking about uh, policies for, for auto insurance. And in this particular situation, so you sign up your customer and then you need to collect the, the, the money from the policy. But every person is a different user. Some people pay on time. Some people pay five days later. Some people take two months to pay. And you want to maintain that good relationship with the, your customer, regardless of who of, of their profile. So what you can do with artificial intelligence is understand, uh, analyze the profile of each customer so that you can treat thousands and thousands of customers in a way that they feel is personal. Some people prefer to be treated more formally. Some people prefer to be treated less formal. Um, some people prefer a message earlier. Some people prefer, prefer a message later. You can configure a whole solution. And what we did was configure a whole solution to collect those receivables so that we can increase the KPIs for the company and at the same time maintain the relationship with the, with the customers that those who were extremely good payers didn't feel like they have been they were being chased by the company but they were contacted at the right point in time with the right message and with the right channel so that is a very concrete example that we did with with a lot of success that's a great example what would be typically a compelling reason for a company to adapt and adopt our enterprise ai what would they miss out on if they didn't come on board right now? That's an excellent question, Anivan. And, and I, I, I love a book that I, lead, that I read last year, and it's Thank You for Being Late by Thomas Friedman. And he talks about the age of acceleration. And he says, look, without getting into all the details, but every agent, every company, business person will continue ad advancing at different speed according to the knowledge and tools they have available. 
And today we have more tools, more computational power, more capabilities available to our hands. And companies are in that rate. So if we are in a very competitive environment like the one that we have, and we have a very powerful tool that we can use to start improving our bottom line, and we know that it will take some time to develop that full competence, why don't start earlier? as soon as possible so that you can achieve those those outcomes that you want to achieve in one, two or three years time, but start today to build that road. I think that, you know, we are in artificial intelligence today is like internet was in the in the mid nineties or or moving to the cloud was in around 2005, 2010, where we're still early stages, but you can already see tangibly what are the benefits of the technology. And that is that is the challenge that companies have today is to start engaging in, in learning what it is and how it will impact their process. Many organizations think that, that artificial intelligence is highly involved with technology and therefore only technical people should be involved. What's your opinion? Well, I think that is right that is very you need competent people you need people who understand the technology but is but more and more we see the need for multifunctional teams that collaborate together and probably the basic one most uh, close example is is what i'm doing with uh, with worker um you know getting a marriage of business and technology is absolutely critical there is the fear of new technology so you need the senior sponsors you need the the people who are more strategically managed it, a CEO and, and, and top leadership who see the long-term benefits of the solution. And also you need the people close to the action, the people who really know what the application, the current processes and applications do so that they can help to build a structure, the new structure, the new paradigm, paradigm that they will need to have or they would like to have with artificial intelligence. So I think it's a combination of visionary, of operational people who know their, their processes and very capable technology people who can communicate, understand the needs and transform those needs into actual solutions that can be deliver and, and, and deliver results for the for the organization. You raised a very important point, which is certain industries are able to adopt it faster because they have more technical competencies versus certain industries not. What has been your experience so far? My experience is that companies that are closer to, to the customer will have adoption that is much faster. And they tangibly, when you have thousands of customers and you have demanding customers, and Arnivan is not only about the, the millennial, right? It's, is really all all age classes have have higher expectations because they know that what can be done with technology if you have a smartphone you already have a good sense of, of what what is possible so all those companies that serve customers like uh, retail e-commerce financial institutions including mutual companies including insurance they are seeing more tangibly what are the benefits from artificial intelligence and they are the ones who are probably at the at the edge of, of the deployment of, of artificial intelligence. Having said that, there is another very interesting um, vertical, which is healthcare. And, uh, you know, coming from Philips, uh, I saw already early stages what they were doing with artificial intelligence. And, and more and more, they are going to deploy that, that area because they have the, the, the innovation mentality to you know, keep going the, the, next, the next wave of technology. I think that healthcare companies, including equipment, uh, diagnostic, pharma companies, all of them will be active uh, users of, of artificial intelligence in the, in the near term. What would be some of the ways that you would go about convincing stakeholders to get their buy-in? So it's, a, it's a great question. And it comes again to the, to the competitive environment. It's, it really is about... Uh, the race that companies need to go through in order to be able to to win customers and to remain uh, valuable in the competitive marketplace. Um, it comes again to customer expectations and the, the desire to, to fee, be felt special, to be treated special and not like one number more, but more like the special characteristic that you as a customer have. And the ability of AI to personalize and to provide that experience that you feel is personalized, that, that, that is the main driver for companies to get closer to customers, to be able to deliver that personal experience, uh, not with humans, because that is extremely expensive, but with a tool that resembles some of the 
uh, behaviors of, of humans. How do you measure the effectiveness of an enterprise AI implementation? You know that I'm come from finance, so that is that is uh, that is right on the on the sweet spot. Um, return on investment. I think that we should uh, we should measure um, every solution on the merit of the investment that it requires, the resources that are invested, and the return that it comes. I think that is uh, the time of strategic investments with the strategic returns is, is gone, is, is really the time to have tangible financial results that can prove that a solution that is implemented uh, indeed improve the, the KPIs, the KPIs of a company. Um, I think that's the that's the that's the main the main the main driver. Now, the beauty of enterprise AI is that because you collect information in in these solutions, then you have a lot of transparency of how much how much resources, how many resources were invested into the solution, and what is the outcome that you get from from that. So, the, the additional benefit of artificial intelligence is that transparency that allows you to to generate the, the return on investment or to calculate the return on investment that, that, that business leaders need to have. In the past, uh, a lot of the ERP implementations would take months, if not years, uh, but with some of the new age digital technologies, it's just a matter of weeks, you know, with, especially if you use Agile, uh, you run these sprints, which are a few weeks uh, at a time. What's the typical approach enterprise AI would assume? That's, it. That's exactly the one that you described. We use agile technology. We have sprints. Uh, 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 the average implementation time for our solutions is, is six weeks. Um, and, it's, and it's done usually in sprints of three, uh, three sprints of two weeks each time so that uh, companies can start to see results, tangible results in the, in the near term. When companies would embark on enterprise AI journeys, what are some of the challenges that you prepared them for during the active course of the journey? Education. One of the, of the main topics is to educate the management team on, on what is the purpose and what is the objective and the results that we want to accomplish. That is one of the main areas that we spend quite, quite a lot of time. The other area is security. Um, and it's, this is very important concern, obviously, for, for organizations. The, the, the data is, is, needs to go to the, to the suppliers many times, but it doesn't mean that that data is, is not secure. It needs to be treated in a proper way with state-of-the-art um, tools that allow you to ensure that all the, all the way through the data is completely, completely secure. And that is one of the, the key efforts that we do when we work with companies in order to make sure that, or make them comfortable that by deploying AI, their, the security of their data is not compromised. Looking at the future, AI is going to redefine the coming decade. What are the trends that you foresee happening from your perspective? That's very interesting. In, the expectation is that the impact that artificial intelligence is going to have on the economy is in the, in the trillions. And, um, and I, I would love to have the crystal ball to say, okay, how this is going to evolve in, into the future. Um, I think we need to go step by step, really taking the technology that we have today and start to deploy them and then building from that. Um, I am, I, when I look at what we have gone through in the last 20 years with, the, with internet and cloud, and, um, and you still see new business models being created on, on those technologies. So the waves of innovation that go through technology take quite some time, even though you have a peak of innovation, there is still more applications to come. And, I, and as I mentioned before, AI is still in the, in the early part of the curve where we are seeing application of certain technologies. Um, there will be in the next 10 years a huge deployment or more of more applications that will, will help uh, improve um, or help our lives be better in the, in the, 
in the personal life and in the corporate world as well. And that brings us to the last question. How about sharing some practical tips uh, for our listeners and viewers? I think it's, it's important that we start, we all start to learn about AI and, and demystify it. Um, I am very glad to see new articles and uh, information about the reality of, of what AI can do, can do today. Um, as I mentioned before, Coursera is, is a great source of, of videos and knowledge and training by, by very capable people um, that can help the executives, the leaders to understand what this new technology brings and what can be done so that when, when they start to connect the technology when they, with the everyday processes and applications, then, then, you, then you start to build those bridges in between and then, then you become the whole technology becomes more tangible um, again the whole the whole idea of demystifying artificial intelligence is is top of our agenda at this point in time um, our website has has a lot of content as well so people can can look at it and and engage in conversation with the experts um, there is there are increasing number of, of experts in the field which i think is positive so that you know the, the, the knowledge is spread around and, and the adoption is, is going to be is going to increase in the in the next in the next few years. Yeah, you raised a very important point around the education and in fact I can't stop emphasizing uh, the importance of skilling education and training, especially the way technology is rapidly evolving. Coursera is a great example. One of the other ones that I also look at is Udemy and edX, these learning platforms are extremely good when it comes to providing quick shot understanding training at a very very affordable nominal cost compared to some of the other trainings that we did in the past that were quite expensive so i think that's a great point to end the conversation for today but before we go what would be the best way for people who would like to continue the conversation to get in touch with you sure so i'm uh, fabio rodriguez sanchez in, in linkedin and the company is uh, work.r um, enterprise artificial intelligence we we have our website uh, on, on on linkedin um, so feel free to to reach out and uh, happy to to engage in conversation around this this fascinating topic fabio with this i would like to bring an end to the program today it was great having this conversation with you and we hope to see you again in the near future. Thank you, Arman. Many thanks for the time. So this was the episode of how enterprise AI can be used by companies in order to improve their processes and performance. So if you like the interview, then don't forget to press the like button. And if you want to continue hearing more interviews, then subscribe to our channel. Till the next time, bye-bye.